Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. My name is Brian. Now in this episode, we're gonna show you some procedures that you can use in order to get a nice black glossy Lexus type style finish. We're gonna go through some of the gun setup as well as the preparation and gun spraying technique as well as your environment, how you can get yourself the cleanest possible paint job working wherever you're at. Now this particular job when it came in did have some scratches along most of the panels and luckily the scratches were not deep enough that they needed any sort of bondo so we were able to just sand them out with a 320 block them and then from that point give it a nice coat of high build primer. Now once that was all sanded it was luckily it is a straight black so we're able to use 400 and 600 and we're not going to have to seal the vehicle now one very important thing that you're going to want to do no matter what type of paint job it is is you're going to want to wash the car down if you take a look at this car you can see that there is no dust there's no sanding dust nothing no prep work no indication that this car was actually sanded other than just looking at the panels itself and this is such a crucial step in any job to get a clean finish so make sure you have enough time to clean down the actual vehicle before it comes into the paint booth to give yourself the best chance. They're then gonna wanna follow that up by giving it a good tape job. Now any tape job that is clean, nice and tight is gonna enable you as a painter to get the best possible job. Now due to the nature of the damage of the vehicle and the newness of the vehicle, this vehicle actually turned itself into a service loaner but we wanna make sure we put the best possible job on it. And that's what we're gonna show you right now. All right, so we're gonna start off and we'll get our base gun. Obviously I have a lot of guns to demo and once they're demoed, I'm giving them away. That's how it rolls on the actual Paint Society channel. So guys, make sure that you're staying tuned to all the videos. Uh, I'm not sure this is the one I wanna take a look at. Uh, the TV, DV one I wanted to take a look at, which was the uh, a special edition. Oh, this is the black edition. So I don't want that one because there's actually an even cooler one. Take a look at this one and see if this is the one. Guys, I really, this is one of my favorite guns, the DV-1 uh, base gun. I mean, it's hard to compete with. What? This thing is sick. Look at that, man. Wow. Check that out. So this is the gun we're gonna be using. You know, I'm a big fan of these spray guns. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up. Let's back this out. Let's dial this in. We'll stop it right there. Let's set this at wide open, which it already is, to the left. And we'll get our PPS adapter on there and start spraying some paint. Now there's a few things that professionals use that do-it-yourselfers can use as well. And that is a neutralizer or a static gun. You might think, Brian, this is metal. Well, it doesn't matter because guess what we have? Plastic. So using this over the whole entire car when it's a big job, it really neutralizes the car so it doesn't attract any of that dust, right? So the the plastic doesn't attract it statically and then fall onto the panel. So good to use, a brand new tack rag. Also, you can see that the floor is covered in our green like 90 pig mat. It's due for a change, but it's holding down the dust because we use something called a dust control. And that's something you can spray on right before any paint job. You can apply it just once in the morning. And what that will do is hold down any of the dust so your paint job doesn't get any in it. Now for this, all you're gonna do is just tack and use the actual neutralizer at the same time. And that will help neutralize all the panels and get all the dust off. Now you also wanna make sure that you're completely covered. So you're gonna to wanna to get one of these Paint Society paint suits. They're probably one of the most comfortable paint suits on the market and you're actually supporting the channel at the same time. So Amazon, there'll be a link to get yourself either the full suit or the lab coat. So you're ready to spray paint and you're like, where do I start? You got a job like this and it's a pretty big job. So where do you start? Well, we have all these primered areas. What I'm gonna do first is get these all covered up. Since this is straight black, which we mentioned earlier, we're in good hands, but we're not just gonna paint the area here. We're gonna take the whole side, we're gonna do the whole trunk. We're not gonna do any sort of blending because we have a little bit of key marks over here that we need to touch up, but we'll kind of take it over into this area. I know this color is gonna match, so we have it easy in that regard. We're gonna take the top and leave it. We don't need to paint that, but the hood over here, we had some damage over in here. I'm not just gonna paint this area. Guys, I got extra slow in here. It's actually kind of like a cool night around the 75 degrees, but with black, extra slow, and it's actually reduced up to 70% in the computer. 
So that's a feature of this paint brand. You can over reduce it, especially with these blacks or silvers. It's just gonna lay so much smoother. And no need for sealer on this one since it's all black, this will get covered in two coats. So let's first cover up those areas and then we'll allow that to dry and then we'll hit up the rest of the vehicle. And this is moments after spraying that. You can see how lovely it colors over that black primer. So if you can get a primer that's very similar to the color that you're painting, it's gonna cover really quick. Now the paint is always gonna look a little bit different over the primer than it does the OEM clear coat. Do you see how it looks a little smoother? Don't worry about that. These are all things that made me nervous when I first started um, painting. It's gonna flash. The reason why you wanna let this flash is when this flashes, it's going to look completely flat. You're not really even gonna notice that after the last coat. And honestly, this only really needs one more coat and the least amount of coats, the better, because if we can get out of this in two coats of base, guess what? We've put on less paint and we're gonna have a smoother paint job. We're already using extra slow and it's over reduced by 70% in the computer. So it's laying on super silky smooth. And now here we're back. I actually put on a next coat, same exact thing just for coverage in this area. And uh, we can see now that it's going away. So however many coats you have to do in the middle to get coverage, fine. But I want you to do what I'm about to do on this last coat if it's straight black and you're gonna put it on wet. So, so many people don't know what wet means. What does that mean? How close, pressure, all that stuff. But well, we mentioned we're out 17 PSI on this spray gun. Now, these guns operate at a much lower PSI. That would be equivalent to maybe around 23, 24 on a regular gun. So, how are we gonna put it on wet? Well, we're basically gonna be doing the whole side from top to bottom, and we're going to slow it down a little bit, and we're gonna get a little bit closer. We're not gonna make any adjustments on the actual pressure itself. And this is actually gonna look shiny until it dries. What does that do? Well, by putting it on wet, it's going to dry super smooth. If, if you have too much of a distance, what can happen is it might go on dry. Now, with what we did on our first two coats, it's fine. We wanna introduce the paint to the panel, but now we're gonna lay it on and we'll show you how to do that right now. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna have questions. Brian, you started in the back, now you're starting in the front. Honestly, right now, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference because it's black. But if it was a metallic, I'd always start in the front because the exhaust is in the back. So I'm gonna be doing the whole hood basically. I'm gonna leave it off at this body line. So if there's any color match difference, you're not gonna see it. It's gonna be a little bit of a blend here. But this is black. Like I said, we have good experience with matching 212. All right, so just after spraying that, you see it went on much wetter. It looks wetter here. We're not gonna touch this with clear coat until it completely flashes. This is gonna look super uniform and smooth once it flashes. We wanna give it about a good 15 minutes with the heat. If you don't have heat, obviously double that time up, but you don't wanna trap any of this with uh, clear coat solvent because it's gonna find its way up through little pinholes called solvent pop. So 
Also, another thing with black guys, if you sanded it with 600, I know it's gonna look a little bit scratchy here and there, but as long as you know you sanded it with 600, just ignore it. That's how black is. Sometimes it looks a little scratchy. Clear coat will fill it in. You're not gonna see it. So I don't want you to worry about that, but mainly you're gonna see it on straight black for the most part. So let's let this flash, and then we're gonna come back and take a look at it and clear coat it. So she's done flashing. Now we're gonna tack here. Now we don't always tack, but I do before a clear coat if necessary. And if I did this properly, little to no overspray will come off of this. So, so basically we might see a little overspray on the edge of our blend, but there shouldn't be any sort of overspray anywhere, okay? And this is super, super, super smooth. Super smooth. You can't even feel it, which really shows me and tells me, I mean, look at that that this is gonna be a nice clean paint job. So we are going to use none other than our WS400. Now when I start out with clear, I'm gonna start work myself from the front of the car towards the exhaust. That's a little bit more important when you're clear coating. Also, my first coat is not gonna be super wet. I tell you guys many times, first coat, clear coat, if you put it on super, super duper wet, what can happen is you can get some runs. So I'm gonna have some dry spray in it. I know that, but as a seasoned painter, I know that my second coat, I can come back and I can clear that up. Wow, what a gun. What a gun. This is the first coat, a little dry right there. That's where the spoiler goes. But uh, really happy with that so far. Look at that. That's insane. I might just wanna leave it just like that. I don't see any dirt. I don't see any dirt. Check that out. What? Man, this makes me happy. You telling me I don't have to buff? What? I'm a happy man. Let's let this really tack up though. Let's give it 10 minutes, tack up, and then we'll lay down that second coat. Now we're here after 10 or so minutes and it's still flashing. The key to any successful paint job is patience. Can you imagine that you can have success just by relaxing and allowing the chemicals to do what they need to do? Because if you try to rush it, you're gonna find out after the paint job. So what I'm doing right now is I'm letting this heat up and dry up. But if you don't have a heat paint booth or a garage, let it tack up a little bit, okay? Because now the second coat, when it goes on there, it's going to stick on there wetter, it's going to lay shinier, and it's gonna look complete. I know this looks great, it does. But <clears throat> there's maybe like a couple dry areas, seeing the door right there, I mentioned on top of the trunk, and maybe a couple little tiny specks okay a couple specks i see actually right in here tiny that clear coat will build up on top of it if you try to put the second coat on too quickly it's going to melt into the first and you're not going to have that build so now we've created a layer 
a layer that's kind of skinned over just a touch, just a touch. So when the second coat goes on top, it's gonna lay on top of it instead of going in it. Let's lay it on. We're about 15 minutes out at 120 degrees. We're gonna put it on a little bit wetter and this thing is gonna be ready for delivery once it's assembled. All right, so here she is, guys. And this is after that second coat. We can see any of that dry spray, it got completely cleared out, smoothed over. So don't worry if you have any on that first coat. The second coat, you go ahead and clear it up. You see we had some in the middle of the door, but now it's nice and clean. So there will be just a minor, minor buff of a couple dirt nibs here and there. Uh, I think that's it, to be honest. There's one right there and in the hood. I honestly don't feel as though we should touch the hood at all because I don't see anything significant, honestly, um, that would warrant trying to buff it and get swirls on a black car. Sometimes the smallest of a dirt nib, it's better than swirls that catch your eye. And this one is just too clean to, uh, to really have to mess with, to be honest with you guys. But we'll go ahead and take a look at it in the morning and see how she looks. And then we'll get this thing all assembled back up this car will have a nice life again um, helping out the many folks on the road as they get their vehicles serviced and it is my duty to make sure that this looks factory and i think that's just what we did so a few closing remarks that i think you guys need to know having a spray booth does not warrant meaning having a beautiful paint job every time I had the idea when I first came into the spray booth from painting in my garage that once I got into here, everything was going to be perfect, right? It's a controlled environment. It couldn't be further from the truth. Okay. So if you have a spray booth, you have the opportunity to get clean jobs like that. If you don't have a spray booth, you're going to have to work harder to get that opportunity. But once again, having a spray booth does not grant you the right to think that always you're going to have a clean job. Remember how we cleaned the car completely before it entered the booth and we wiped down all the panels and we have that like 90 booth coating. So between the pigment and the particle control, everything adds up, the neutralizer, all those little things attacking, the spraying of the wet base coat. These are all little things that you can do and start applying on your next spray job to get similar jobs like this. Now we're only gonna take about a few moments to go ahead and nib out where we need to be and this car is on the road. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the Series 2, WS400 and of course the DV1, our base coat gun. Great looking gun, did the job, great combination. You don't need to stick to just one gun only. I hope you guys learned something from this video and you can apply it to your next paint job. This is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. Let's get this thing wrapped up.